Hello, this is Ryan, and today I'm demoing my uh, Node Station game, which is a clone of Space Station 13. Uh, when I boot it up, you'll notice a lot of changes, mainly in the graphical sense. Um, I found out, albeit with a lot of help from other community members, thanks to you guys, uh, this is looking pretty great, but uh, I found out eventually how to crack open the Space Station 13 graphics files and get all these updated. Right away you'll notice that when the, when the character runs around that they are facing the direction they're moving, which is a new feature, albeit not a great one, but it adds some uh, livelihood to the game. You'll also notice that everything looks Space Station 13-ish, which is good. I was getting tired of my art. I did a lot of work on the doors, so you'll notice that if I try to get access to them, they will blink angrily at me. And if I grab an ID card, they'll let me through, and animations will play kind of on the fence about that because while the animations are cool and the images are all very nice it doesn't add any playability to the game it just looks pretty but uh, you know I think it was worth it in this case so hopefully uh, this doesn't end up uh, biting me in the rear end another feature uh, that got added was uh, person collision so now you can no longer phase through each other so if I pull up another version of the game I cannot pass through. So that is something that works. Um, passing through, I'd like to find out your opinions and thoughts on that. I know sometimes when two people are running at each other, they'll pass through each other. And I don't have that implemented yet because I'm not really sure how that works. But uh, I think that would also be a nice feature. Another major change is that we got a completely new engine. So the engine that we used to be on was Kiwi.js, and we switched to Phaser.js, which is more modern in my opinion, and I can't believe I didn't find it when I did my initial um, search for uh, JavaScript-based engines. So I think this will be much better, and I, th I spent a lot of time porting it, but I think it will be uh, use, use, useful in the long run. All right. I think that's uh, all the visible changes, so I'm going to start going through the code. For those of you who aren't into the code, you can stop watching. Uh, I don't want to bore you guys too much. But if you're into the code, please follow me into the land of text. Just kidding. So the major changes here are going to be the door timing and the pawn facing direction. So you'll see the pawn facing direction code starts here. We calculate a new facing based on the keys pressed and then we apply them if the pawn is standing or is facing a different direction than what was commanded and we dirty the pawn also doors now have a uh, ticks left timer thing pretty much exactly like the pawn motion pretty much just kind of copy and paste from from that idea and that's uh, that's only changes that were necessary for this update none of the changes were necessary for the engine um, update or change, which I think shows that I'm keeping good separation between server and client. I'm not sure I have a choice, but at least I'm somehow keeping it. Moving on to the game.js, which used to be the play.js, but in the new engine they kind of compressed it all together. So one of the things that I'm still tuning out is are these numbers right here. When you change these numbers, it changes how scaled um, the world is. And I think I've got the world a little bit too big, too zoomed in, so I may need to make these numbers smaller. We'll see about that. Um, here in the preload function, this just sets how the game window scales when you move the, the browser around and shrink it and blow it up. Here, this was all in the Kiwi engine as well, but this is in a different file kind of hiding from you, but here's all the image assets that my game now loads, and it loads a ton of them. This has been this update has been a lot of typing, getting all of this stuff in here. Um, unfortunately, we're not seeing all of the capabilities, but we'll get there. So I think it was it was good work. So if we come down here, a lot of this has not changed. Here is the group code. Sorry, right here is the new group code. This is the phaser equivalent of groups. Uh, this code is necessary, otherwise the camera like doesn't follow the pawn 
at the edge, it just lets the pawn move around, which I don't know if I like that. So this, this may cause some weird graphics when you get a larger station. I think we can just change these numbers and make them whatever we want. I'm surprised there's no way to make that just as big as we want it to be and not bound it. So here's the uh, here's the tile sets for the walls and floors. Same kind of pattern as we had for Kiwi. Nothing too different. Um, you'll notice here on Reconnect this code actually shrank because the uh, phaser engine allows you to remove all items from a group which means less for looping through things. Um, the new map works about the same. The update tile works about the same. Pawns Giant Edition. So we have right leg, left leg, right arm, left left arm, body and head for just the pawn, like their naked body. And then we have all of these other clothing items that they could possibly wear. And I don't think this is it. I think there's probably more I'm missing. Space Station 13 has just a, a ton of content. And with all of that, I had to figure out an ordering that works. So hopefully... Hopefully this works, and hopefully we don't have to change it. I'm very impressed with the, the artistry and, and Space Station 13, how they got essentially just a module person. It blows my mind. They, a lot of people spent a lot of time on that. Uh, other than that, the rest of this is pretty boring. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, items really haven't changed. Doors have changed a little bit. They have three sprites now. They have a base sprite. They have a cover sprite, so sometimes your door will ha will have transparent windows. Others, they'll be other time they'll be covered. So this up here is an example of a covered door. And then we have a sprite layer for the lights. So that's blinking red if we don't have access, and blinking blinking green if if we do and they're open. So we have some logic here, you know, whether or not they're visible and where you what layers you add these things at, and you know, just basic door stuff. Um, Door hasn't really changed other than ticks left and opening speed ticks. I might have to tune the door a little bit. I, I think it happens a little too quickly, but I don't know. We'll see how it how it all fills out. Chat has not changed at all because that's oops, because that's all HTML5 vanilla, no no game engine there. Uh, inputs have been changed a bit to fit the phaser way of doing things, which wasn't too terribly different, although I'm thinking I, I think I probably could have done it an easier way now with the phaser engine. But uh, if it ain't broke, yeah, don't fix it. Uh, the pawn grab and drop functions have now not are not namespacey because I've moved everything out of the Kiwi namespace thing that they had going on, which is making my code much easier to read. So that's that's quite nice. And I don't know if that's just how the Kiwi default um, uh, the default setup worked, or if that was just a requirement of, of Kiwi. Um, this action percent ticks is a convenience function that I wrote, where you pass in the ticks left, the total ticks, the last update, and the update time in seconds. So, uh, and that computes a percentage of animation before it's completed. And the reason why I did that is because now I'm using this both for the pawn walking and for the door opening and closing. So that way we compute the animation time in a similar way, which is not great, I'll admit, but at least it gets the job done. Um, now we use this uh, uh, game.camera.follow instead of this uh, um, manually computing the center, which is, which is nice. Uh, I had to kind of struggle with that in the early uh, time, but I eventually got it to work. Doors now have animation, and so they've got this huge chunk of code right here, which is very large. And uh, my favorite state of the game is the nope state of the door, which hopefully uh, hopefully doesn't come and bite me in the rear later for being such a, a really bad state name. Essentially, it's the state of the door when it's blinking the red lights at you because you don't have an ID. And so I think that uh, that pretty much uh, sums up my uh, my showing off for the night. Thank you for paying attention and uh, have a good night.